Our next speaker is Raja Naik. He's the director of Blue Now, and he will talk a little bit about how um, fish silage tanker design. Welcome. Thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the invite, uh, Nor Fishing. This is my first time at uh, in, in Throndheim and at Nor Fishing as well. So it's been a pleasure uh, being here. And uh, yeah, so I'm here with my uh, colleague uh, Stian, and uh, we are Blue Now. I'm the director at Blue Now. We are a consulting company based out of Oslo, and uh, we do ship design, ship building. Uh, have some capacities available for us back in India. So that's, uh, that's our kind of a job that we do uh, regularly. Uh, so the next uh, thing is about the current fleet that we have in international waters. It's around uh, BIMCO. BIMCO is the Baltic International uh, Maritime Council. It, it says that there are around 15,000 vessels that will go to uh, the scrapyards and um, a little bit half or more than half of this is uh, short sea shipping vessels. Around 1500 of these are in European waters and at least most of them will have to go to the scrapyards in, in the foreseeable future, either due to environmental regulations, low charter rates, market conditions, you name it, but mainly age. They are more than 25 years of age and they will go to the scrapyards very soon. And mainly these are dry bulk container tankers and uh, so these are the major majority ship types that, that, are, that are old tonnage and we'll see that they will, they will go to the, to the scrapyards very soon. With that in background, the next um, tonnage that we need to build will have to be sustainable in nature. For that, what I mean is they will need some new, new future fuel technologies. You'll have to see that the investments that people make on these kind of assets, uh, they, they, stay, they stay for the entire life of the vessel. 30 years is a long time. You will have so many ups and downs in the market, either due to war, uh, COVID, you name it. There will be market conditions that will kind of dictate what kind of charter rates you will get. And by that, what it also means is you don't, if, if a market has gone down, you don't need to go to the scrapyard. You'll have to do something about it. So we are developing products, sustainable products, and in this case, ships, which are based on the platform architecture methodology. Platform architecture is very common in, in automobile. It's only now that we are bringing it to the shipbuilding industry. And as far as I think four months back at Nordic Maritime Forum in Oslo, I heard MAN engines developing their new, um, new ammonia and methanol engines on the platform architecture methodology. So that's, that's something new I heard in, in, in our industry at least. So going ahead, what does platform architecture really mean? Platform architecture means you have the same hull form, you have all the same dimensions of the vessel, and I, will, I can build different ship types based on the same hull form, as you can see here. Not only you will be able to build a vessel on, on a given vessel, whatever vessel it might be, a gas carrier, a bulk carrier, a tanker, you build, I can build anything on the platform architecture. What it means is, in the long term, if a market crashes for the asset that you have built, I am able to change the purpose of that asset seamlessly. I can get you approval in principle right at the beginning in the design phase for that next change that you envisage. It depends on the market. For example, if in India, I want to I build a bulk carrier, maybe my next um, AIP is for a, a tanker, an oil tanker or a product tamper, tanker. In Norway, it could be a, a, a tanker that I built initially on, on, on the AIP or the, on the next change. It could be a gas carrier, an ammonia carrier, an LNG carrier for that matter. So that's, that's, what, that's the flexibility platform architecture brings to the table. One of the products that we are developing currently is the silage tanker. 
it's on the same hull form that we have developed other other products as well. We are also developing for a Greek uh, Greek owner. We are developing a bulk carrier, a small bulk carrier, on the same platform. I'm, I'm, I'm develop, we are developing a silage tanker. Now, I am told that LNG, bio LNG, as you saw in the previous presentation, LNG, bio LNG is very common here. So I have taken that as a base case. You, you can. We, we, I'm also looking into uh, having a full uh, electric uh, drivetrain. The next version of this could be a full electric drivetrain. So we, have, we are meeting some battery owner, uh, battery manufacturers here, and and the people working in that um, that development work. So we could have uh, an electric drive drivetrain as well. This is the dimension that I have for now. Like this is something a, a, a broker came to me and asked me for. So this is something I have that I have made. And if there are any investors here, any ship owners, charters, brokers, this is a this is a design that I have that we have created on on concept. We have still to do a little bit more there, but uh, as you can see, it is 69.69.9 meters. So this is a good uh, length for a silage tanker. And knowing that you know most of the silage tankers today are small in size, old tonnage. I think the last last time I saw some silage silage tankers were like what more than 25 years old. They are really old. I think there are owners who are building new ones. I, I've seen that as well, but it's not picking up as, as fast as I would have imagined. So if you want to know more on this, I have a specification. I have a base spec for this. If you are interested, I can share the details on that whenever, if, if you are interested and would want to know more. And, uh, and that's basically it. I have a yard capacity back, back in India. We have the design. We have the, the spec will be ready. I'm preparing the yard spec. As of now, we are looking. We, when we did the initial spec, uh, we looked at a, a, a price tag of around six million USD uh, on the base case. Uh, so, if if there is anything else that goes in, you, you need some sophistication. I was told this morning that um, you know we need to take care of the safety aspects. There, are, there is a lot to the silage tanker business that I need to take care of from a safety perspective, not only on the sustainability side powering, electric, and so on, but also on the safety side, I think. Uh, that's, that's something uh, we will take on board. And uh, we have a Norwegian designer uh, who, will who is collaborating with us uh, to, to take the design as you, know, you would require it for the Norwegian market. So that's, that's my time. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. And I, I can take any questions if you have. Thank you so much. So we have actually three minutes for questions. Sure. So please, any questions? OK. Before we have questions, I have a question to you. Ahead, yeah. Are you working only for Norwegian market or for European as well? We are working for all markets. OK. Um, this particular concept, I'm, I'm more bullish to take these concepts to the developing world, mm. where I think China, all, I mean, the, the East, uh, the Far East is picking a lot of shipbuilding capacity and has, has, has sort of a monopoly on shipbuilding right now. So such small sizes which are in the break bulk hmm. trade should be taken to the rest of the world. You should see shipbuilding happening everywhere because it creates jobs, mm -hmm. it creates sustainable economies. There's, there's, there's a lot of things that drive shipbuilding uh, from, a, from an economic perspective. So it should, it should go everywhere. This particular concept was for Norway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will uh, collaborate with with uh, suppliers here mm -hmm. uh, to get the, the relevant technology, the le relevant standards. Uh, as I said, we are working with uh, a Norwegian designer. We are collaborating mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. to give us those nuances that we would need mm -hmm. from class, from mm -hmm. regulatory authorities, from mm -hmm. the business. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend here, he said about the safety aspects. I mm -hmm. was not aw even aware of. Mm -hmm. he, he mentioned that there was a uh, there was a fatality on on such uh, such a business a few few years mm -hmm. back. Something. So this is something new to me. I never, I've never heard of this. So we'll have to take those aspects into consideration. And do you have a lot of competitors in Norwegian market and in the European market? For for the silage yes. tanker? Yes. I'm not sure about that either. So you're the you only we one? Are, I, I would like to believe uh, until somebody comes and okay. challenges that, that I'm the only one for now. Okay. But uh, see, it's, it's not rocket science. No. I'm sure there will be people coming and doing this after, after us as well. But uh, we need to. We, I think we we, we are we are on a good starting point here. Mm 
Mm. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I uh, hope to believe as well. So yeah. any questions so far? Okay, if not, thank you very much again for thank such you. nice presentation and good luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for solutions. the opportunity. Thank Thanks. you.